Tonight we're going to be talking about hormones and leaky gut, which is interesting because some of the top prescribed medications in the world are actually hormone therapies for females. Now, if you think about this, leaky gut is the precursor, right? Leaky gut is the precursor for autoimmune disease, meaning leaky gut oftentimes has to be present in order for autoimmune disease to develop. And that's why this is so critical because so many of you are taking hormones to treat autoimmune diseases. So if the hormones can actually cause leaky gut, the ones that you're taking, and leaky gut can contribute to autoimmune disease, you can see how this can kind of become a vicious cycle. So if we look at one of the top hormones prescribed, we've got levothyroxine. Now, make sure I spell that right for you. So levothyroxine is a type of T4 preparation given to women and men alike. T4, which is inactive thyroid hormone, but it is the medication given to people that have low thyroid function, right? Hashimoto's is one of the forms of autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's disease of low thyroid function. Now, one of the biggest problems I see in clinic, people come to me from all over the world with this issue that they're on levothyroxine, their other doctors have prescribed them levothyroxine to treat their Hashimoto's or low thyroid, but simultaneously, these women have a gluten problem. Now, gluten sensitivity, we've talked about a number of times, is, um, is one of those things that can contribute to thyroid problems. So gluten, we know there's a lot of research, over 300 research studies that show the connection between gluten sensitivity and low thyroid. It's particularly though, there's research that shows that gluten sensitivity can actually cause Hashimoto's disease. Now, the problem with levothyroxine is that it has, inside of it, it has corn. Now, many of you may be saying, well, corn is gluten-free, right, Dr. Osborne? Um, no, there's a, there's a type of gluten in corn called zane. And this type of gluten, this zane gluten, has been shown in a number of research studies to be more detrimental or more inflammatory than wheat gluten. And if this is the first time you're hearing it, let that sink in for a minute. Corn gluten, research studies show, can be more detrimental than wheat gluten for people with gluten sensitivity issues. So the, again, going back to this, gluten sensitivity can cause low thyroid Many people that have low thyroid are given or levothyroxine, which contains corn, which is more detrimental than wheat gluten. If you're gluten sensitive, it's going to kind of feed into your hypothyroidism. So if you are a female taking, I say female because the vast majority of people on levothyroxine are females. Uh, so if you're a female or a male and you're taking levothyroxine for your low thyroid, and you also are gluten sensitive, know that you're getting a source of gluten, albeit it is not a source of gliadin or wheat, barley, and rye gluten, but corn gluten that has been shown in science to be more detrimental than wheat gluten, contributing to gluten sensitivity. Now, why is that important to understand? Is because one of the primary causes of leaky gut is gluten sensitivity, and one of the primary drivers of autoimmune thyroid is leaky gut. So you see that pattern, you see that correlation, very important to understand it. Again, so many of you taking leave it the rocks and I've, I've just this week already, and it's only Monday, I've talked to two different people who were gluten sensitive, whose doctors prescribed them leave it the rocks. And, and so, you know, part of that conversation was follow up with that doctor and ask that doctor to write you a compounded version. So those of you who are out there saying, well, what the heck do I do? Get with your doctor, ask them to write a compounded version, meaning they can still prescribe you levothyroxine or T4, 
but they can do so without the corn filler or any of the grain-based fillers. Now, again, if this is brand new information to you, the other thing I would encourage you to do, aside from getting that, you're asking your doctor about the compound aversion, is go read No Grain, No Pain. If you haven't read that yet, you need to read it. Because if you think you're following a gluten-free diet, uh, if you've been told somewhere along the line that you have a problem with gluten and you think you're following a gluten-free diet, it's very possible what you're actually following is a traditional gluten-free diet and not a true gluten-free diet. And if you don't, again, if you don't know what that means, um, you've got a world of hurt coming your way because you know research studies have shown that up to 92% of people following a traditional gluten-free diet fail to actually overcome the inflammation that they're experiencing for the reason they went gluten-free in the first place. So again, no grain, no pain is what I would recommend that you read. It, it's, a, you know, it's a nice weekend read. It doesn't take that long to read it, but it uh, can enlighten you. And one of the things that's going to enlighten you about it is corn gluten being more detrimental than wheat gluten. For those with gluten sensitivity, again, is a trigger for autoimmune disease. And what are we talk, talking about here? We're talking tonight about leaky gut, right? Hormones that cause leaky gut, okay? And this is one of them. It's not the T4 that causes the leaky gut so much as it is the filler ingredient, right? The gluten issue that drives the leaky gut that then subsequently drives the autoimmune disease. And again, if you've got autoimmune thyroid disease, you're going to be spinning your wheels. So that's number one, thyroid hormone. If it is a thyroid version of thyroid hormone, it has grain-based derivatives or corn-based derivatives with gluten in them. Another big one I want to talk about tonight, because many of you are taking estrogen, particularly for most when they go on estrogen, it's a, it's a form of estrogen called estradiol. Now this is found in, you know, so if you're a woman and you're going through menopause and your doctors prescribed you what they're calling bioidentical hormones, those are estradiol. Now if you're not on bioidentical and you're just on the straight uh, estradiol, kind of the, the, the general version, so to speak, the difference is, is that bioidentical hormones are actually much safer um, they more match your hormones naturally than, than like drugs like Primarin, which are horse urine derived estradiol. And, and these are, these are, you know, this, so the other version there, the non-bioidentical version is associated with a lot more side effects. But that being said, it doesn't matter whether you're taking bioidentical or non-bioidentical estradiol. If you take an estradiol, it applies to you. Now, the other that we see people, women with estradiol is when we're trying to either one, prevent a pregnancy, so BCP birth control pill, right? Or we're trying to normalize a cycle. And so a lot of times doctors will just say, oh, you have an abnormal or a painful cycle. They'll prescribe you a form of estrogen therapy for that. So we'll see again, these forms of estrogen therapy oftentimes given in menopause for hot flashes or for other pre or uh, perimenopausal symptoms, uh, night, you know, hot flashes, trouble sleeping, irritability, agitation, severe mood swings, emotional instability. And then we'll see this prescribed in women who are trying to prevent pregnancy, but also to normalize their cycle. So estradiol. Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.